Hi learners, today I have come with the description of the factors which are responsible for protein solubility. I will be explaining you how the protein is soluble in the aqueous media or the polar media and then once you understand, you automatically will understand that how we can precipitate the protein from that media. See, number of times we need to precipitate the protein in the given urine solution to understand, to know whether the protein is exactly there or not. So, before we go there and understand how the protein can be precipitated, it is very important that first you learn why the protein is soluble at the first hand. See, there are two factors for the solubility. Number one, the net charge. And number two, the shell of hydration. The charge on the protein depends upon two factors. Number one, the isoelectric pH of the protein and number two, the pH of the solution. Every protein is having its own isoelectric pH which is its specific characteristic. At that isoelectric pH protein will be neutral. So if you are putting a protein in a solution whose pH is same as isoelectric pH of the protein, the protein will be neutral. But if you are putting the protein in the pH solution whose isoelectric pH is less than, uh, sorry, whose pH is less than isoelectric pH of the protein, then protein will be positively charged. And if the pH of the media in which the protein is soluble is more than isoelectric pH, then the protein will have net negative charge. And this charge determines the shell of hydration. Suppose this is the protein which is positively charged, then it will have the layer of the water around it. Similarly, if it is negatively charged, it will have the layer of water around it. Why? Because the water is H2O and this is a bipolar solvent. Oxygen is having negative charge and hydrogen is having positive charge on it. So, if any protein is having the positive charge, the oxygen will be attracted because of its negativity like this and here also the oxygen will be attracted. So, whole water molecule will be coming and making a layer all around. This is called shell of hydration which is making the protein soluble. Similar fashion, if the protein is negatively charged, then positivity of proton will be attracted towards these negative charges and a shell of hydration will be made around it and of course the protein will be soluble. So now you understand if the protein is in Zwitter ion form or neutral form then it will not be soluble because the shell of hydration will not be there around it. So these are two factors now as you understand the net charge on the protein and the shell of hydration around it is they are two important factors which is making the protein soluble. Now, once you have understood this, now you clearly can understand that how to precipitate the protein, precipitation of protein, how to be done. Either you neutralize the protein, which is already soluble. Suppose urine is having some protein which is soluble. Most of the time it is albumin which is excreted in the urine. And of course, that is soluble. You cannot see by the naked eye that albumin is there in the urine. It is soluble. So, if you want to precipitate the albumin in the urine, so you neutralize, neutralize the protein. How will you neutralize the protein? You bring the pH of the urine sample to the isoelectric pH of the protein. If you talk about albumin, listen carefully. If you talk about albumin, its isoelectric pH is 4.7. And urine pH, we take it as 6.5. This is urine pH, right? So, urine pH is 6.5. Isoelectric pH of albumin is 4.7. As I have explained you earlier, if the solution pH is more than isoelectric point, the protein will be negatively charged. And this is the reason that albumin is negatively charged in the urine as well as in the plasma. Because 7.4 pH of the plasma is also higher value than 4.7, which is the isoelectric pH of the albumin. So, albumin in biological fluid, in the plasma, in the urine is always going to be in a negative fashion, negatively charged fashion. So, you can either neutralize the charge of the albumin or and that can be done by bringing the pH to the isoelectric point. For that, you need to add 
certain acid into the urine. The sulfosalicylic acid, sulfosalicylic acid can be added in the urine drop by drop and uh, the pH of the urine will dip and when it comes to 4.7 level then albumin becomes neutral. Because the isoelectric pH, that is pi of the albumin is 4.7 and that albumin becomes neutral and gets precipitated. So, by neutralizing the protein, you can precipitate the protein. So, by using the weak sulfosalicylic acid, you can precipitate the protein. You can remove the shell of hydration. You can remove the shell of hydration. You can remove the shell of hydration. How? How to remove the shell of hydration uh, from around the albumin? You can either use the acetone or acetyl alcohol drops. Two or three drops are enough to precipitate the protein in the urine. Why? Because they evaporate. They are volatile substances. They evaporate and the shell of hydration is disrupted. You can even use ammonium sulfate. Salt. A pinch of ammonium sulfate salt if you add in the urine, the protein will be precipitated. Why? Because ammonium sulfate extracts the shell of hydration from albumin and makes itself soluble and precipitate the protein albumin. So, by adding the salt, you are precipitating the protein. This is called salting out. You are adding the salt and making the protein visible. Salting out method, you can precipitate the protein. And number three. A method by which you can precipitate the protein in the given biological fluid in the urine mostly is the denaturation of the protein. You know what is denaturation? Denaturation of protein. When the secondary tertiary quaternary structure is lost and the protein is unfolded, of course it is losing its structure and it is unfolded and it gets precipitated. The solubility is also lost. So, how to denature the protein, how to denature the albumin which is there in the urine solution, either by using the heat or by using the acid, a strong acid you will be requiring this time that is concentrated nitric acid. Heat, if you are using the heat to precipitate the protein by denaturing it, it is called heat coagulation test. I will be covering these practicals in practical series videos and so you can kindly watch those videos to really understand how this heat coagulation test is being done to precipitate the protein in the urine. The concentrated nitric acid also can precipitate the protein and this is known as Heller's test. Heller's test. So we have got so many methods to precipitate the protein. I just summarize in another one minute that to precipitate the protein, first of all, you need to understand how the protein is made soluble. It is soluble in the biological fluid in the polar solvent because it is having some net charge on it and because of that you have shell of hydration. So, either you neutralize the protein by bringing the pH to the isoelectric point by using some acid or you remove the shell of hydration or third point I said that you disrupt the structure of the protein by denaturation, by heat denaturation, by acid denaturation, right? So, to neutralize the protein, you use weak acid. To remove the shell of hydration, you uh, use the acetone or alcohol. Ammonium sulfate by salting out, it can precipitate the protein. Denaturation can be done by heat or strong acid like nitric acid by doing Heller's test you can precipitate the protein. Thank you very much for more such informative videos you subscribe my channel and any doubt you can ask me in the comment box. Wish you all the best.